Hello ladies and gentlemen of the PBO Nation and PBO YouTube channel. I am Zach with the New York Malamars here with your Sunset Pickums for week three. Unfortunately, Mr. Dozo taking care of some important business this week, so I'll be flying solo. Let's get right down to it. So we got the Orlando Magic Carp against the Helsinki Jellicents. We got Rain against Iron Bundle, a classic interesting matchup. So first of all, with the Rain team, we got to see what is... The water resist Primarina, a special wall. Latias could act as a semi check, but doesn't really want to keep taking the flip turns in and out. We'll probably see a rocky helmet. Skarmory in this game. Uh, but we don't have any really stupid. Oh, and we have Serena here, right? But we don't have any s stupendous checks to the Barrascuta this week. So I'd imagine we will be seeing the Barrascuta, which will outspeed everything under the rain, no matter what anything does. Even Unburdened Sneasler is now outpacing that Barrascuta. Can we do anything with Iron Bundle? As is the case most weeks, guys, we cannot actually do anything with Iron Bundle in this game. If it clicks freeze-dry over and over and over again, uh, everything will fall relatively quickly if it's not a Salt Vest Archaladon. Again, this is a Dragon Steel, which means it's neutral to ice moves. Uh, and other than that, we do not actually have a single, unless I'm missing something, except for Terra Steel Hitmon Top, and I guess Terra Ice Jolteon. We have no ice resist at all on this team, so that's very, very devastating for the Helsinki Jealousists to just be able to run almost any bundle set out there, click Ice Beam. Doesn't even need Freeze Dry, just click Ice Beam every time and it just devastates the opponent. Uh, how's Boulder in this game? This could be a decent Boulder game, so Booster Speed, Boulder. Uh, I, I think it's faster than Sneasler, don't quote me on that, but I think it might be a couple of points faster. To my gut, I, I feel it's definitely slower than Bundle. Bundle's definitely the fastest, except for Barrascuta on the field, right? But, uh, Booster Speed, SD, uh, Iron Boulder looks like it can do something here. Crook is tough for it, though. Crook, so we might have to see Intimidate Defensive Crook to check the Boulder. Um... Zapdos and Rain, pretty good here, unless it is Terra Electric Snorlax. Um, and we don't have a ton to deal. We've been seeing some great success from Orlando with this uh, Amoongus in these games. People that are playing Orlando, you really need to bring a designated check with safety goggles to deal with this Amoongus. So, like, for instance, we have the grass type here, Serena, that can come in, in theory, to take the spore, but then it gets sludge bombs. Um, and there's n nothing to keep anybody from going to sleep. Who knows, maybe we see electric terrain set up manually by something to block the sleep. And we could get, uh, Terra Electric Snorlax going in the terrain. We could get all kinds of crazy stuff going, right? Um, but I think off the face of this we can't deal with the water very well and i think there's a good zapdo set here unless it's specifically terra electric snorlax or some type of really bulky latios maybe just a choice scarf zapdos can do a lot of damage here just vaulting around and clicking hurricane maybe you just bring double electric type with ice coverage on the jolteon and just shoot Volt switches into this and make the crook commit to come in, and then we beat it with Bear Scooter or something, and then we can sweep with Iron Boulder at the end. I think uh, the best chance Helsinki has is to be Boots, Bundle, or uh, maybe because the Rocker is our child on, which it doesn't really want to run rocks, maybe we just be Specs Bundle and just attack and hope we can kill three things. But I feel like I'm going to go Magic Carp. 60 40 in this game. I like, I think the Bear Skewed is really strong, and I think they have three or four really obvious good sets. Okay, we have, while we're going through this, guys, let me just mention if these games have happened, I have not seen them. I might have been in the chat for one game, I think, but I wasn't, I didn't see what happened, so I've not seen any of these games. 
Uh, we got Nir Nevada Counter Caterpies against the Goldango. Oh, the Gilded Champions. Um, okay, so right off the top, Great Tusk. Really tough. Booster speed, Great Tusk. Really tough. We might need to... Well, Ditto can't copy the booster speed. So this, this could be a tough game for the Champions just because Tusk exists. Uh, I can't remember if Goldango outspeeds Tusk. If it does, it might have to be Choice Scarf to have some way to revenge this Tusk. But again, Golden goes, uh, excuse me, the Champions team is weak to ground and fighting, and we have maybe the best ground and the best fighting type in one Pokemon on the, on the other team. So right off the jump, that's very difficult to deal with here. Um... As most of the time, there's no real Blood Moon check, but we have a huge special tank in Sylveon that can come in and probably take a Blood Moon and then attack it back, even through a Calm Mind. It can probably Calm Mind Wish with the Blood Moon. At least get it low enough to where something else can come in and kill it. Um, we have Clodsire is a nice piece to try to deal with the Greninja if it's special. But... Yeah, none of these, none of these pieces are stupendous in this game. Obviously, if you set up the Gambit at the end, something can happen. But Tusk, the classic Gambit answer, right? That'll come in, outspeed it, and attack. Kiram, we have probably the best special answer, one of the best special answers to Kiram we can have in Sylveon. Uh, Kiram does have Flash Cannon, but it'll probably probably be Specs to do anything with that. So we probably should see a physical Kiram set. But then, okay, a combination of Sylveon and Reg Regiseal is really tough for Kiram to deal with, depending on what its set is. So we'd have to be physical Kiram with the Earth Power coverage, but it would have to be enough to deal with specially defensive Registeel, which I don't know that it can. Um, I'm trying to see something that champions can do here. Um, I think the best bet is... Some type of reverse sweep with Ditto. We get in Blood Moon at the right time, try to get two kills, maybe Calm Mind. Um, but yeah, this is this is a 90-10 for Caterpies. Uh, Tusk against this team, he could not see a worse Mon on the other team than Great Tusk. If this isn't a Great Tusk sweep, I don't know what is. Okay, we got... Hong Kong Heatrans pr trying to prove me wrong. Picked up the win last week. Even though we did we did pick the Heatrans to win last week. We did pick him. He's going up against the Rock Ruffs. Okay, let's take a look at this game. So the first thing I'm looking at, we have a we have the rare good Keldeo check in Toxapex. So in theory, Keldeo, well, okay. So we see Toxapex. The question is, do we just run sub? Keldeo in this game, bait in the Toxapex, sub, and Calm Mind. That's what I would do when I saw this. So, guys, when you're watching this, if something has an automatic check defensively, you should ask yourself, okay, can it beat me back? If it can't beat you back, then always ask, can I just set up on this? So there seems to be a pretty decent Keldeo setup set that will probably eventually get through the uh, Toxapex as long as it's not Haze. So, Hong Kong better bring Haze Toxapex to just shut down Keldia. What else do we have here? Uh, Meow is okay. It should out- it outspeeds Tornadus naturally. Um, it's the fat. Is it faster than Darkrai? I think Meow is actually a little bit slower than Darkrai, but it does outspeed the Tornadus. It can get the triple axle off. That'll kill every time. Uh... I wouldn't run the Scarf Meow if it was just Tornadus, but maybe we will see Scarf Meow in this game. It's relatively dangerous because I think the Toxapex has to be Spadef to deal with the Keldeo in the long run. Uh, so maybe we see Scarf Meow here and the a rare item on it. We'll see that this week. You turning around looks pretty decent. Um... There's definitely a good Lando set here. If it's some type of mixed set with EQ and Grass Knot for Quagsire, I could see it possibly doing something. Uh, that that might necessitate a Bring of the Earthworm to try to shut it down. 
because I don't believe that Lando has Focus Blast, right? So, Hong Kong has a lot of the answers in this game. I can't see any really stupendous way he just blows through the game. Um... We have a relatively decent check to Skeledurge in Quag. Uh, if we run Spadef Quag with Toxic, uh, that probably would never gets beat by Skeledurge. We can kind of throw Toxics out for free against this team. It's not bad. Regis, uh, excuse me, Reverum doesn't want to switch in on it. Take that Earthquake first unless it's Air Balloon. Um... And then how do we deal with Iron Hands? We have a pretty decent Iron Hands pseudo check in Skeledurge, right? If it's fully defensive and it's not setup hands, well, his setup hands wouldn't do anything against uh, Skeledurge. But if it's booster energy hands, you'd have to do the calcs on if Earthquake does enough damage. It might, but maybe we just run like Air Balloon Skeledurge. Is that any good? Maybe. Um. This game, I can't, I don't see a lot of great advantages for Rockruff in this game, to be honest. On, on paper, it seems like he should win, but um, I don't think Reverum can ever beat Quagsire. Uh, thinking of its move pull off the top of my head, I don't, I guess it could Toxic it. I'm assuming it has Toxic. Uh, maybe you bring Reverum, fake the setup set and parting shot out to get momentum. Uh, I, I always think that's something, you can still bring setup, but just bring the... Bring the fourth move as parting shot so you can get some momentum up. But, um... The combination of Quagsire and Toxapex kind of look to wall the vast majority of this team. Uh, and even a DOD set at the end, it's gonna have... It's gonna have some trouble with Mew. It, it could have trouble with setup Terrapagos. Um, yeah, I don't... I don't see a lot of great lines for Rock Rough, so for the second week in a row, I'm killing my own original power rankings. I'm going to go Hong Kong 60-40 in this game. I don't see any really great sets other than Mixed Landorus, which now doesn't have Rock Polish anymore, so it can't just get speed and outspeed everything. Uh, but Rock Ruffs can definitely win because he has better Pokemon, but I just this week, I don't know. I like, I like Heatrans this week. Okay, we got the Sun against the Balance teams. We have Sin City against what I believe is Swabloons. We don't have our uh, logo up there right now, but that's okay. I know these teams well enough now. Okay, what do we got going on here? So we have the three Dragon team against the Iron Valiant team. So we are guaranteed to see Scizor in this game. It'd be crazy if we didn't. Uh, but that's a distinct weakness. Right, so there's not a whole lot we can do about that. We do have the roaring, uh, excuse me, uh, gouging fire is neutral to fairy, but it's still more physically bulky, right? So if this is some type of specially just specs or set up uh, Iron Valiant, it can just kind of shoot moon blasts for free because Scizor is still taking damage. Uh, Skunk Tank is neutral. Right, and all the other walls, there's not really a pure spadef wall here. Other than you can run Diancie as a Spadef wall, but uh, it's not like specifically designed to be that, and it's not going to resist the Moonblast, right? So that's an advantage. Um, if we get some Dragon Dances up with Dragonite, seems like that's just another sweet potential, right? So it just needs EQ, Dragon Claw, Roost, Dragon Dance, just bulky setup. If it gets two off, probably a pretty good set. Uh, is there an Ogre Pond set in this game? So, there's no Rock Resist except for Ursaluna, which is weak to Grass. So there's definitely a really good Ogre Pond set here, uh, assuming it can keep the Sturdy up and not get revenged by Scizor. So that might be the end game win con here. You blow a hole early, maybe you get Valiant it early, you don't try to sweep with it, it's just a spec set. And then you finish the game after Scizor is gone with Ogre Pond. Seems like he can set up pretty easily and just attack. Uh, Ursaluna is essentially required to come because we have Regilecki, so 
Guys, even if you see the four times resist in um, Raging Bolt, it's not so much about the damage Aleki does, it's that it's always going to force you to switch out and keep momentum up. So you go into Raging Bolt, he Volt switches into Spadef Gligar, just for instance, and Earthquakes, and we have no flying type here, right? So then that's just free damage or a U-turn, keep the momentum up. So, what are the advantages that Sin City has in this game? Uh, I think Scizor is pretty good. I don't think... Corviknight really doesn't want to come to this game. But I guess it kind of has to to try to check Scizor. But it's weak to so much in this game that it's just going to invite in so many free switches. So, if Corviknight comes, it's almost forced to click U-turn every time it switches in. So it's going to be very hard for it to defog. It's going to be very hard for it to try to set up or even roost. So uh, maybe if I'm Swab Loons, I just drop it and just try to set up my own hazards and hope that Scizor kills itself over time. Uh, like most weeks, if Gouging Fire gets set up, I think it just it just wins here, right? Like my Lodic's a pretty good check, but if it's not Marvel scale, it'll get outpaced eventually. So it can switch in, it'll haze, but if it's just taking Dragon Claws and it's not the Flame Orb set, I'm pretty sure it'll just die eventually, like it can't keep pace with uh, Gouging Fire in the long run. And then we de we probably need the Spadef Milotic to deal with the Walking Wake, because we... Our Dragon Resist is not taking, is not bulky, has no recovery. Uh, Spadef Corv would be pretty good, but as we said, it's weak to so many other things. It would, it would, it would, if it comes, it would have to be there to check Scizor, and it's not taking a Hydro Steam anyways. So we probably need Spadef uh, Milotic here. Uh, is there a good Raging Bolt set? There's almost always a good Raging Bolt set. Yeah, so again, our Fairy doesn't want to take Electric moves. Our Ground type... Uh, it can still take good hits, so Gligar has huge bulk. Uh, you run the specially defensive set, but it doesn't have recovery, right? So if, it can only come in on so many Dracos. So Dracos are kind of free in this game because there's almost no way that he's going to switch in the Iron Valiant on Raging Bolt just because it, it's just a terrible waste. If you're wrong, you just lose. Uh, so Sin City definitely has play. Uh, he has a lot of a lot of strong attackers, and there's not a lot that can answer it on the other team. But I like the balance better. I came up with just off the top of my head three really strong sets on probably the best offensive Pokemon on Swabloon's team. So we're probably gonna see like uh, Iron Valiant, Dragonite, Ogre Pond, Milotic, Gligar, and then a, a sixth guy, probably either Overquill or. Corviknight, depending on what he thinks he needs. But I'm going to go... I do like the Sun team in this game, though. I think they have a lot of ways they can win. So I'm only going to go 55-45 Swab Balloons in this one. Okay, we have two interesting teams. Chicago Chimchars against Cherry Hill Bell Sprouts. So in the Dragapult game, we always see what can deal with Dragapult. So Tinglu is pretty good. If I see Tinglu here, we would assume it's probably going to be sub Will-O-Wisp, right? Because there's not a lot Tinglu can do against that. It switches in on the sub. We Will-O-Wisp it. So if we won... Oh, but we do have Baxcalibur here that uh, could play some mind games here. I still think it's probably the right set, right? Because then you just Dragon Darts it or Draco it after, and you have Petrant to kind of handle that a little bit if you mess it up. That's a dangerous set, Bell Sprouts, but it's probably still the most high value thing you have. Because other than that, they'll just run physically defensive Ting Lu. Excuse me, like, like, AV Ting Lu just would eat Dragapult up if it's not at least Will O Wisp. So maybe we see sub Will O Wisp Dragapult. Um, Petcheron's not terrible in this game. It probably can still take on Ting Lu if Ting Lu has no attack and it's fully defensive Petron. Petcheron will beat backs, I think. Uh, it'll at least get a Toxic off on it, so we probably need to see SD backs here. If it really, if Chimchar's really wants Baxcalibur to beat Petron, even if it's EQ, it probably needs Swords Dance, or else Petron will switch it on the Dragon Dance, Toxic you, 
and parting shot out probably still be alive and then you, it'll go right into grim snarl and then set up the screens so we have veil vale against screens here that's interesting can we actually stop sub backs behind the aurora veil screen so that might be uh, we have appleton too this is a really interesting defensive game right so but can appleton ever break the the aurora veil sub screens back scalibur so maybe this is the week I, I can't remember the last time we've seen this in the pbo i don't think i ever ran sub back scalibur but this is a pretty decent week because the best things that stop the back scalibur I don't know that they can break the sub if Baxcalibur is, is behind Aurora Veil. So maybe we're just Aurora Veil sub Baxcalibur try to beat it. That's a really strong set here. Uh, Grimstarl doesn't want to take ice moves. And I think that we're going to have some real trouble getting past Ting Lu in this game. Ting Lu sets up rocks. Uh, Tentacruel really doesn't want to come in on it. Tentacruel's got two really hard checks here in um, Empoleon. And it can't... I mean, it could do some damage to Tinglu, but it doesn't really, you know, want to come in on it. So I think on the face of this, I can see uh, Bellsprout's having a lot of trouble if it's just Hazard's Tinglu try to beat this and you could keep coming in and setting it up cherry hills bell sprouts doesn't have a great way to directly damage ting lu it's gonna stick in any way uh other than that he could annoy it with dragapult he could toxic it with glyscore maybe we see sub glyscore here maybe we see sub earthquake toxic that seems pretty decent here but um on the face of it, I think a really basic just hazard stack, Aurora Veil sub setup strategy seems really hard to beat for Chimcho. It seems really hard to beat for Bell Sprouts because his, his, arguably his best physical wall, Glyscore, wants absolutely no part of Baxcalibur. Um, if there's decent Spadef investment, I don't think Petrant can easily get past a sub. And if it can't toxic Baxcalibur, it can't consistently stop it. Um, Iron Crown can hit it super effectively. And I guess that wouldn't be a bad thing because Typhon Cutter goes through the sub. But it's going to take a ton from Earthquake. And again, we have Ting Lu here who's, if it's got Spadef Investment, it can switch in pretty free. And then Iron Crown has to hit a Focus Blast. And I don't know if you want to rely on that, but you might have to. Um... Thunderous, again, would have to hit a Focus Blast. So Cherry Hill Bell Sprouts is going to have to run Focus Blast on probably two Mons at least to really get through this Ting Lu because he doesn't have a great way to do it, at least to my eye. So based on that, I'm going to go 60-40 Chimchars. I think they have like four really easy, basic sets that they can bring, and it, Cherry Hill has to get real creative to win. Probably, I, I, there's a pretty decent, like, sub-annoying Gliscor, annoying Dragapult, maybe, uh, AV Crown with Volt Switch to get a easy come in on the Empoleon, and then we have Focus Blast and just try to catch Ting Lu on the Switch. Uh, but yeah, I like Chimchar 60-40 in this game. Okay. We got the Syracuse Snorlax against the Tokyo Teddy Ursa. Uh, Teddy Ursa might have the worst schedule in the history of PBO. Uh, so the very, very good team, 0-2, came up against maybe the two best teams in the league, now playing the Spectrier, Glow King, Hasui, and Samurai team. Is this his week? Uh, what does he do against Spectrier? He does very little against Spectrier. I'm sorry, Tokyo. Um, there's nothing really great stopping Spectre here, so we have Pheasantipity, um, but, you know, if it's just nasty plot on the Switch, or he just is Specs, like, how do we stop just Specs, Spec, how do we stop Specs, Spec in this game? So we almost are necessitated to bring our normal type, but it's weak to Draining Kiss, 
So that's really annoying. And then you don't know if it specs until it goes into the game. And if it subs on the Switch, you can break it with a knockoff. But yeah, just, just going past the first guy, I don't like this matchup for Tokyo. Maybe we have to hope that it's set up. Uh, maybe we hope it's sub and we run like beat up. Pheasantipity early in the game. Hope to toxic it. That's probably our best bet. We keep switching on it. We try to toxic it. Uh, but there's no real... Like, Knacklestack resists Ghost. But again, it's much more physically defensive even with the Eviolite. And it'll just get set up on it and it can't... It, it, Snorlax can EV this thing to take Soul Cure and not break a sub. So it's not a real check. Um... The Pranksermon can never come in on it. Like, it could get a Thunder Wave off, yeah, but it's it can't switch in. So we might auto-need screens, so maybe we lead screens, but let's see. What advantages does Tokyo have? What does he have going for him in this game? Didn't cut out, I'm thinking. I'm just looking at what advantages Tokyo has in this game. Uh, Glow King is really, really annoying for Wash. Wash can't really do anything at all to it. It can't do any meaningful damage off the top of my head. Um, it should probably be clicking Volt. Okay, here's here's an advantage. They can click Volt every time because they'll always outspeed the Don Fan, and the Don Fan wants no part of Wash, assuming it's not Scarf or some choice item. So we should be able to see good momentum with Wash because the ground is probably going to die every time to one Hydro Pump, and even if it switches back out, it's a free Will-O-Wisp. So we have that going for us. Um, the ground is also pretty specially weak, so it doesn't ever want to switch in on Heatran, and our only fire, our fire resists are all either physically defensive, so, uh, if this was Specs Heatran, I promise you Hisuian Samurai is still taking a ton of damage from that. If it's not AV Tauros, it's still taking a lot of damage, uh, Talonflame's still taking a lot of damage. And if it's the Magma Storm set, uh, it makes it have to be Chili Reception Glow King. Because even Glow King, as tanky as it is, is still taking probably 35. Plus the chip from a Magma Storm, right? Um, same thing with the Asui and Gujra. Like, it can come in on a fire move, but if it's that Magma Storm Protect set, suddenly it's lost like 50% of its health just off the rip, right? Um... Mola is a pretty good Hasuian Samurai check, just Rocky Helmet, so at least you get some value off, even if he sets up spikes, at least you get some damage on this thing. And then you can Alluring Voice it if you do the calcs and you see it's Choice Scar for Ban and it's stuck in there and just wants to set up the spikes. So you might be able to get rid of that early. Uh, but then again, it can always be that classic Mola thing where they just sub on you and Swords Dance and... If you don't have the alluring voice, then you're just cooked, right? Um, Ape beats almost everything except for uh, Spectrier, right? So Spectrier probably always comes in if Ape has any chip and kills it. But if we see that this very standard Spadef bulk up drain punch thing can probably take one Shadow Ball and then kill it back with Rage Fist. But um, Talonflame might be annoying for Ape because if Snorlax decides, okay, I see Ape, I auto-switch to Talonflame, I just don't attack it and click Will-O-Wisp. Then if it's not sub or rest Ape, we can't really have counterplay to that unless we're running a rock move, which I'm sure Ape has. But it really wants... I guess it only needs three moves, so it could have the free rock move. Uh, and then there is a good ape set, so it's probably an ape set that can win, but then maybe we just run, uh, Prankster Encore on Whimsicott and always auto-switch in on ape, resist, resist the fire move, and we never attack it. That's probably what, uh, knowing Snorlax's prep team, that's probably gonna be the set, so ape will never take an attack in the game, and every time they'll just go to Whimsicott and Encore it. So now we're seeing that there's multiple sets which would force Abe to choose between Gunk Shot and a Rock Move. Because if it's both of those, it's really going to cut into its utility. 
Um, Kangara Chomp Sweep. The Sweep is, again, kind of negated by the uh, Whimsicott, which is going to force Garchomp to have to run coverage for it. And if it has to run a coverage move, uh, then it doesn't have a ground move and S end SD and scale shot. So that could be a relatively tough situation. Yeah, off the top of my head, because there's no, there's nothing that can really deal with this Spectrier, this has got to be a 60-40 game for Snorlax. Uh, I think there's an Ape set that can win. It just, if they bring both Talonflame and Whimsicott, I don't think that there's any way that the Ape can set up on it consistently and win. Uh, and that's the only real setup set they have other than the Garachomp, which seems to be, again, beaten by the Whimsicott in almost every scenario. So... Maybe it's Tropius time, Tokyo. I don't know what it does, but maybe it can do something. And Glow King kind of stu stuffs the Knackle Stack strategy. I uh, can just Acid Spray it. I think Defense Drops can happen on Knackle Stack, so... Just acid spray it, wear it down over time. Um, yeah, actually, I've talked myself into 70-30 Snorlax. On paper, he should pretty easily win this game, I think. I can't see any great sets. Maybe we go Tokyo. Maybe we look at uh, setup cycles are. Figure, figure the set out. Maybe it's like uh, fighting move normal spam or something. Maybe that's good. Uh, maybe just normal spam, fairy spam. That might be pretty good. And then knockoff. It's like shift gear, fairy spam, knockoff, spam, ice beam. Something like that. I don't know. It's a tough one, Tokyo. I'm sorry I picked against you every week. I, I don't want to, but, you know, what can I do? I'm going 70-30 Snorlax. Okay, I think this is the last one. We got the Arbelivas. Dozo's Man against the Wolchester Whoopers. I believe a 2-0 team. I've played some games using this team. It's a lot of fun to use. It's tough to beat. A lot of options here. So off the start, let's see. Can we beat Blaziken? Um, physically defensive Slowking is decent. But again, we have knockoff. So if we SD and knockoff, or even just the first time it switches and knockoff, it's only going to be able to come in so many times. And then if we knock off its boots or Culverberry, you know, we're dealing with hazards. Um... Other than that, we're not looking. We're not looking stupendous. The Glamora defensively, in theory, can, but again, it's a Glamora. It's not usually going to stay around for most of the game. We can intimidate it with Incineroar, but then we're getting close combated, right? Um, yeah. So there seems to be a really easy basic Swords Dance close combat. Do we even need the Fire Move for anything? Uh, close combat, probably Earthquake here uh just yeah sd close combat knockoff earthquake seems like a really good set that beats pretty much everything okay now that i see terra miss mag but are we really going to bring that as a defensive piece maybe just for miss mag we run the fire move and just assume we're going to kill the glamora but regardless there's a really good basic blaziken set here is there a basic ogre pond set um if we run swords dance trail blaze water move uh, I'm sure it has some coverage for Hydrapple, right? Let's assume it has some coverage for Hydrapple. It has Poison Jab or something. I can't think off the top of my head. If it doesn't, then it probably just run U-Turn and take the damage on it. Because I'm sure if it SDs and then U-Turns, that does a ton of damage. Water move kills. Uh, treads. After an SD, just probably Trailblaze kill. Wait, does this even need Trailblaze? He outspeeds everything, right? So maybe we don't even need Trailblaze. Maybe we just run SD, Ivy Cudgel, Horn Leech, whatever move hits Hydrapple, and that should win the whole game, right? So it's our Believer's choice if he wants to bring Trailblaze or uh, just whatever. It's kind of most weeks, as it's going to be the case, it's kind of forcing Wooper in this game to run Choice Scarf Enamorous. Because if not, he's just letting Ogre Pond win. So, and what do we have on Wooper's side? A Na Choice Scarf Enamorous, can we beat it? Uh, we have maybe the best Enamorous check in the, one of the better ones in um, Bronzong. So that will definitely come for our Believer's Bronzong. Uh, and then Mystical Fire, if it's not the setup. 
Enamor set. I don't think it'll do that much to Spadef Leftovers. Uh, what's this thing called? The Bell. Um, Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'll think about it in a minute. But the Steel thing. And then it'll Gyro it back, right? So, Hydrapple, what is... We hit... Uh, the downside of Clefable in this game is you can just shoot Leaf Storm over and over again. Remember, unaware ignores all your stat boosts, so the negative ones too. So that's kind of free, but as some switching between Latios and Clefable would be really annoying for Hydrapple. And... We can always absorb the water moves from, from Quavel with the Ogre Pond, so if we switch in on that at any point, then we instantly threaten out the Quavel. And the Unaware Clefable is a pretty decent check to Quavel, right? Um, yeah, I think uh, the advantages that Whoopers has is the hazard removal here is pretty bad in general. Like, you don't really want to bring... Toad Scroll in general, like you just don't want to bring him too much. So, Toad Scroll, unless I'm forgetting something in the move pool, cannot in any way damage Hydrapple, which just lets it come in for free. Which bring letting something that strong come in and get regenerated for free is not good. But we might be forced into bringing it because there is a Glamora, so that's the advantages. There's pretty bad hazard removal on our believers in general, especially in this game, and there's a Glamora on the other team. So if we can keep setting up spikes or rocks, whatever they think is better with Glamora, that's probably their win con. But on paper, from what I see because of the speed issues with Wooper, like really letting Ogre Pond just run free, letting Latios just run free. So uh, Slowking is a great check in general, but if it gets a Spadef drop on the Switch and then it gets uh, like maybe a Luster, the, the Soul Dew, might be good in this game, right? We Calm Mind, we Luster Purge, and we Draco. Like, there are sets where we can do something in this game. Slow King is a good check, but it's not some catch-all check. And again, it can only come in so many times. Then we flip turn out of it into the Ogre Pond. I see a lot of play for our Believers. Uh, Watchester's team is good, though. I just... The speed issue, this is the week where the speed issue... Last week against Tokyo, Tokyo also had a speed issue that's even worse than Whoopers. But this week, I think Wooper's speed issue is finally going to get exposed. And I'm going to go Arbelevis 60-40 uh, in this game. Okay, guys. I think that's all we have for this week. That's your Pick'ems Week 3. Good luck to all the Sunset players. I don't know what our record is. It's not as good as it is in Stargazer because we don't know the players here as well. But I'm starting to learn things. Starting to get more info. Next week, we'll be back. I think Dozo will be back. And we're just, we're moving up, we're moving out. Good luck to the PBO Nation.